Well, good evening, everyone. Summer's wearing on, and I hope it's been a time of enjoyment for you. Amazing, actually, seeing that it's still pretty light at 10 o'clock at night just now. Well, that's one of the, the blessings of the time. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we, we give thanks to you for the changing seasons and for all that summer reveals to us of your creation. The life that we see around us, the colour that we see around us, the sounds that begin from early morning to, to late at night. Lord, we're, we're grateful that you are revealed in your creation, that people can experience your power as they stand before the loveliness of all that you have created. But stay with us now as we turn to your word, which is the supreme revelation of your being and your will. Draw us more deeply into your presence and your peace. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, a couple of weeks ago, folks, in these evening meditations, we began a, a short series in a couple of verses in Psalm 146. I've been explaining in past weeks that the last few psalms in the book of Psalms are psalms of praise. When the psalmist is focusing on various aspects of, of God's being, which evoke a sense of gratitude, thankfulness within him. It's sometimes been said by people in appreciation of someone else, thank you for being you. And that is really what the psalmist is doing when he reflects on God's being and finds himself giving thanks to God. I'm going to read to you the, the verses again, which say, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful for ever. Well, we've, we've been thinking about the God of Jacob who enters into relationships with men and women. We've also been thinking about the, the God who is Lord over any other impulse in our lives, over any temptation for us to, to be drawn away to worship other people, other things. And tonight we're going to be thinking about God as the maker, the maker of heaven and earth, as the psalmist says. I once heard someone say that the most challenging verse in the Bible is Genesis chapter 1 at verse 1, where we're told that in the beginning there was God. In the beginning there was was God before there was anything that we recognize as creation there was God and if you can swallow that then take off into the rest of the book and and learn more that's the way it was it was put to me and then there's something in that to think of God as he's portrayed in scripture as the God who has created everything that we see in the world around us. The God who out of nothing has breathed the breath of life into his creatures. The God who has scattered the, the earth with color and raised fragrance from the, the fields and the, and the flowers. That's an amazing thing to think about our God as the maker. And a God who who draws us to appreciate himself as having given us this creation to be part of, to enjoy, and also to, to take care of. I'm sure that there have been moments in, in your life where you can say that you had a particularly powerful experience of God as creator. I... Uh, remember it's some years ago now when I was regularly cycling long distances 
and I took the bike up to the Trossachs and I was cycling alongside Loch Voyle on a beautiful summer's day. Um, it, it was quite warm, mind you, to be, to be on the bike. But as I was going along uh, by the, the side of the loch, two wee red squirrels came out in front of me and were scampering along <laughs> ahead of me as I was cycling. And you, you don't often see, uh, I don't often see red squirrels, um, certainly not uh, in the, the, the vicinity of Mulgai, but up there it was just lovely to, to see them like that. And then to get to the, the top of a hill and to look down on the loch, and it was just so quiet. The sun was shining on the, on the loch, and the only sounds that I was hearing was the, the tinkle of, of, of water in the distance. It was a, a very powerful moment. And I'm quite sure that there have been times like that for you when you felt close to God through his creation. But we're also reminded in Scripture that, that in the words of the old song, this is a world gone wrong. Uh, it's been spoiled because of human disobedience. And we have to pay attention to that, friends. And, and you know, one of the great concerns of the moment is, is climate change and how we are continuing to contribute to what our ancestors would, would call the spoilation of the earth. And coming to, to terms with the fact that, that things are so out of joint that there's disharmony between ourselves and various parts of, of creation. You know, it's a wonderful image in, in one of the, the stories in the book of Genesis of how Adam gave names to the animals. A powerful thing to, to name another creature and that speaks of the closeness in that moment between man, mankind, humankind and creation. But of course that's been spoiled and we look out at nature and we see nature as one uh, 18th century philosophy described it as being red in tooth and claw. You know, I was wakened up the other morning by screeching in the, the garden. It was two cats fighting one another. And later on in the day, uh, Gabriel saw gulls swooping down on a, on a fox, probably uh, threatening their, their young, I, I don't know. But it shows you the, the, the disharmony that exists within creation in this moment. But we're reminded again in Scripture that God is not leaving, leaving things as they are. It, it came to me as I was looking out on Loch Voyle on that very special day that this is wonderful and, and your senses are entirely captured by the moment. But there was an aspect of me saying, well, you haven't seen anything yet. Because God has, has promised a new creation. Out of all the, the darkness and the disharmony and the suffering that we go through in our lives at this time, there will be a new Jerusalem, a new society, a new creation for us to enjoy. Think of your most powerful experience of God's creation and then allow yourself to be told that you haven't seen anything yet in what God has promised. Paul saw the, the whole of creation as being, as being engulfed in labour pains and labour pains are not good in themselves so I'm told but in the end, there is a new creation, something to rejoice in, something to enjoy, something to cherish. And that is, is what has been promised to us as we face up to the limitations but, uh, that, that are in nature at this moment. But the maker 
has not abandoned us. And the plan is that out of the brokenness, there will be completeness, not just for us as individuals, but for the whole of creation. A new heaven and a new earth. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the glories of your creation, for all that speaks to us of, of your power, your, your love, your imagination, that there are so many things for us to enjoy. So we thank you. And we pray that you would impress upon us the need to be careful in our whole attitude to your creation, that we will treat it as a gift, and that we will respond with gladness and with a sense of responsibility when we see things going wrong. We pray now, Lord, for ourselves, asking that you would forgive us in our carelessness with regard to your creation and in our carelessness in our relationships with one another. We ask for forgiveness. And we pray that you would make us better to serve those we know who are sick, who are suffering, who are feeling downhearted in this moment. We ask, O oh Lord, that through your forgiveness, through your renewal, and through the gifts that we see all around us, that we will be made more able to be servants one to another. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.